Hey guys, Metko here from DN Models. Today we will take a closer look at one of the most intriguing scale model subjects in 48 scale. This is MiG-25 PD and it is the only decent kit on the market nowadays, especially considering the Kitty Hawk fiasco with their own release a couple of years ago. MiG-25 was always strong point of interest for modelers and so far this is the very first truly acceptable kit on the market. I cannot say that about the box since I had to rip apart one of the sides in order to open it freely. It is not a big deal, but I noticed that the Hobby Boss Liberator lately had the same problem and I don't think it's acceptable for a 21st century kit to feature such an issue. Anyhow, this is not something important, just a bit annoying. Once you open the box, you can find a big transparent envelope holding all the sprues and also a small bag that holds the clear parts. Beneath them, on the bottom of the box, there is an instruction sheet and inside of it there are two decal sheets, one with technical stencils and one with the insignia of the aircraft. The instruction sheet is nicely presented on an A4 size booklet. On the front there is a short description of the aircraft, both in Russian and English. Some description of the icons that you will see inside on the building steps and information about the colors that you will have to use during the build. The information on the front page is not enough in my opinion, but it is definitely better than some of the competitive model makers that disregard that completely on their instructions. After that, there are three pages with sprue description. There are not many, but ICM has several different versions of MiG-25, which explains the importance of that sprue description here. Of course, the steps of the building process is what follows next. It is not all black and white, like in most cases. Here we have some red color too. Nothing to be overly excited about, but adds a bit to the overall look. Steps are very easy to be followed, featuring not many parts per each of them, and on top of that everything is very clearly depicted and easily understandable. From the steps it seems like this is a kit suitable for inexperienced mullers as well, although the essence of the fox bat requires certain knowledge due to many reasons. Anyhow, following through it seems like a job well done on behalf of ICM. The subassemblies are logical and from the information that I have there is not much aftermarket offerings for that kit. In other words, what you see here is sufficient for the completion of a decent and accurate looking Fox Bat and 48 scale. Maybe here is the proper place to mention about the Kitty Hawk MiG-25. It is famous for its complexity and some nasty accuracy issues. It seems like most of that is addressed here and ICM managed to smash the competition both in quality and in price. Of course, for those who already have built the Kitty Hawk, this should be self-explanatory, simply looking at the instruction sheet here. Not accuracy-wise, but only from engineering and modeling standpoint, of course. My observation of the Kitty Hawk representation are not deep enough and I cannot be 100% certain in my judgment, but let's say that I can be like 80% sure that this here is the better engineered and better executed kit from the both offerings. Again, why so few options of the Fox Pat in that scale is still a mystery to me. Another important thing to mention here is that Hasegawa and Revell have repacked and reissued this kit, but I'm not sure how their instruction sheets look. Maybe the same, maybe different or better. Anyhow, back to the instructions of ICM's release here. Few steps are especially devoted to the missiles that the interception version is carrying on a typical mission. That is something that you don't have to think of with the reconnaissance versions of the ICM offers, but if you are a fan of the PD, there is no way around the missiles. However, as you will see shortly, they are very nice. 
After the completion of the building steps, there are two more things to be taken care of in that instruction sheet. The stenciling and the paint schemes of the fox bath. I will leave the paint options for later in this video, but special attention must be given to the technical markings of the MiG-25 fox bath. It seems like there is no way around those and the bad news here are that this looks almost as bad as a regular Phantom. Especially with Fox Bat's bare metal options, decaling such a large plane with so many stencils and eventually painted in metalizers and so many small items will be long and tedious process. So in order to do it the right way, gear yourself with patience, couple of spare days and a lot of decal solution bottles just to be sure you will manage. Now let's talk some plastic. As with everything else I have seen from ICM, this kit too comes with light grey plastic material. The sprues are on the soft side but they are not flimsy. It is actually a flexible and it seems that every bit of detail is depicted and clearly visible on that material. There is no defects, almost no flash, I haven't seen any cracks or damages and overall at first glance this all looks pretty good. MiG-25 is a slightly different animal compared to any regular aircraft. I am mentioning that in regards to the external details of the model. On the real aircraft some parts were welded and the rivet work was more or less minimal. This was all dictated by the high speed that this plane was designed to fly at. A different approach was needed to satisfy the structural demands and the heavy stress. The appearance in some areas on the model might look inconsistent or odd, but that is the way the aircraft was built in real life, so this is the reason why. Of course, besides reference photos for the larger part of MiG-25 modelers and enthusiasts, this plane is out of reach and comparing it to the original is more of a dream than reality. This is because you cannot find those lying around at every aircraft museum here and there. Very limited number of examples. ICM on the other hand are a company that comes from Ukraine and they most likely have some access to MiG-25 examples. But all in all, besides abundant reference material, almost everyone is lost when it comes down to the fox bat. Maybe that is one of the reasons why not many companies dare to touch this subject. But ICM did it and as you can see here they did it very well. Especially pleasant surprise for me was the thickness of the trailing edges of the wings and the stabilizers. They are very thin and considering how big the model is it should really look very realistic due to that once built. How well this kit goes together is something that I cannot say yet. I know that ICM messed up the reconnaissance variants a bit in terms of proper nose appearances, but never heard any complaints about the fit or geometry issues. With the PD here, if everything else is properly done, the kit has an opportunity to be the best of their line so far because the nose can be hardly messed up considering the specific of this variant. I know for a fact that Miniart are using plastic that comes from Western Europe. I am not sure though where ICM are getting their material. I have mentioned that before but the comparison is inevitable in my mind since both these manufacturers come from Ukraine. Not only that but they have very strong presence on the market and their most interesting kits are the best in their class. I suppose that ICM know their stuff well enough as do Miniart and their material won't be anything less than the normal standard on the market. Besides, there aren't that many thin and intricate parts as with the tanks from the competitors, so with this particular kit there should be no troubles at all. Maybe if you know 
where the materials come from. You can say that in the comments below so others can see it too. I would love to learn that myself. Anyhow, where the material comes from is not of such importance here, especially considering the end result, which is overall satisfactory. Perfect example for that are the missiles of the fox bat here. They are molded with precision and obvious devotion. The detail is consistent all over and the engineering is good. They are too another fine example of the surface thickness that ICM demonstrated on this kit. If you wonder why I am mentioning that so often, well, this is an issue for many models. Even the best toolings show thicker than needed parts, which is not something that cannot be fixed with some sanding. However, it is best to get the model with proper thickness out of the box, especially in 2019. On the other hand, this is not a tank and photo etch material cannot replace so many parts so again ICM did a great job here. I like a lot the details in the wheel wells as well as in the engines. Probably a resin substitute will improve that a bit but with the shape of MiG-25 and resin engines sitting the model properly might be an issue. With that said, as you can see, the out-of-the-box elements concerning especially the wells and the engines are good enough. Maybe spicing up this and that with some scratch and you will need no aftermarket whatsoever. Truly the nozzles of the fox bat are enormous, but what you get here with some touch-ups and good weathering should give stunning results. Another thing that I like are the wings. Upside down they are very nice and highly detailed. More or less MiG-25 is represented by two cylindrical tubes and those wings. So they are a very important part of the kit. Again from my perspective only. You guys might think otherwise. It is important to give some price to ICM because the wings are in shape simply because they are molded properly to their spruce and the geometry is kept. All in all, the grey plastic spruce in this kit are very satisfying and I am happy with the fact that even after two decades of waiting I finally received the fox bat kit that I waited for. Better late than never. Now we'll wrap up the plastic with the transparent parts which comes next. The canopy of the MiG-25 is very small. That is again dictated by the very high speed and the excessive stress on the outer surfaces of the aircraft. I know from a pilot of the Foxbat that the canopy can reach extreme temperatures in flight and touching it from the inside can be very dangerous in some cases. Something like touching an iron. That is why it is understandable why the canopy is so small considering the age that MiG-25 was designed in. Nevertheless, the clear parts that ICM provided are with beautiful transparency and high quality. Besides, the dashboard is made from that same clear material. That is not a bad idea, but I think that the small and cozy cockpit of the Foxbat does not deserve special attention. That is again only me, of course. Surprisingly, the decals are very abundant with this kit. We have two sheets and contrary to my expectations, one of those is filled to the maximum. With technical stencils, unfortunately. The sheet with the insignia for Syria, Iraq and USSR is simple and straightforward. Thin carrier film, vivid colors, nicely depicted numbers and everything else. And that goes actually for the both of the sheets, however the technical stencils on the other hand seems anything but a straightforward job. There are so many that I can only draw a parallel to a phantom. 
Not only that, but I never expected that MiG-25 had so many of those over its fuselage in real life. But in order to be realistic enough, you gotta cope with those somehow. Now the color schemes. This is a high altitude, high speed interceptor and the only way to paint it is either grey or bare metal. All the versions presented with this kit lack camouflage, but that is of course a very good platform for various weathering techniques. We have two Soviet options, which differs by the numbers, and two Middle Eastern ones, one from Syria and one from Iraq. Soviet options are those who I would pick when I built my PD Foxbat. Soviet Union was the real home of that jet and the Middle Eastern countries had it only as a bonus and by chance. Even though I couldn't care less about those versions, there is an interesting thing about one of them. Supposedly, Iraqi MiG-25 shot down F-A-18 Hornet during the first Gulf War, but not much information is available so to be sure which was the aircraft exactly. Anyhow, it will be interesting to represent this specific Hornet killer. If you ask me, it was pure luck, but it is still an achievement for the fox bat. Whichever of the four you pick here, you will deal with the same exact paints, with the sole difference that the Middle Eastern versions will be weathered with desert tones, while the Soviet ones offer a bit more. In terms of weathering, of course. Probably some optional decals will appear soon, but you can expect that same camo scheme, actually that same gray scheme, and nothing else but different numbers. So, how good is this kit? In my opinion, very. There is no other decent fox bat on the market, for example. Another reason is that ICM did a great job with the thickness of the elements as well as with the texture of the plastic. Detailing is great and with some research and few minor tips and tricks one can turn this into a stunning MiG-25 and quarter scale. ICM line is great overall although it is well known fact that they messed up the reconnaissance versions a bit. Not beyond a reasonable repair, of course. So, would I recommend this kit? Oh yes, you cannot get any better fox bat in any scale and probably you shouldn't expect one soon either. Great job from ICM. And the only thing that they can do to improve that is to scale it up to 30 second. Thank you for watching, stay tuned for more, subscribe, comment, and I will see you in the next one.